for the next couple of minutes here, we'll just be kind of in power in the Power BI service, um, giving you guys an idea of sort of what Power BI can do, as well as kind of looking at where the data can come from. Uh, so Power BI in and of itself is a great place for your reports and dashboards. Um, I mean, there was a lot of talk in the last conversation about that data potentially being in a lot of different places. Uh, Power BI can connect to to probably all of those places, right? So we have an ERP system, maybe we have a support ticketing system. Maybe your sales guys do want a, a different CRM system. Power BI would be a place where we could connect to those things and bring that data together, right? Providing you uh, insights and information about uh, what's happening within your organization. To, what we're looking at here, we'll be spending time in Power BI Pro. And just so you know, there's really two main components to Power BI Pro. There's the desktop portion, which is for the power user, that person who's gonna be writing and collecting that data. And then the Power BI service, which is where users can, can view, comment and share that information, as well as interact with that information. So we'll be kind of focused on that last part here, looking at information and interacting with that information uh, through a series of reports that we have published in Power BI. So as Bob mentioned, this is kind of our, our demo data for, the, for what we have out here. Um, again, your, your focus and data points may be different than what you'll see here, but generally from an interaction perspective, these things would be common um, across Power BI. So we're looking at just a reporting dashboard here, right? I have a series of reports across the bottom. We have a lot of tabs here. One nice thing here is if I can, I can quickly get to any of those sections as I need to without having to scroll back and forth through them. So we can right click in our, in our toolbar there and get to reports as we need them. When we're looking at a particular dashboard, we have multiple, we can have multiple visualizations out there. Uh, so you can see we have some, some charts, we have some grids. We can combine, mix these up as we need to on our reports, depending on who our audience is. What's nice about these panels is they react to each other. So what I mean by that is, let's say we want to know just what's going on with Cisco for our bookings. If I click on Cisco, all of my other elements will change and be filtered to that element. Right. So this is what that Power BI user can do. And really, when they build those reports, link these things up to each other. So when people are asking you questions or looking for specific data, one choice can impact the other choices that we see. Other type of things that we can do inside of Power BI, we'll look at some other visualizations here, but we also have the ability to drill into data um, if we want really that the underlying raw data, like somebody really wants everything behind uh, what's driving some of these, these visualizations. We can pick, for example, here we'll look at uh, margin for Q3 of 2016. If we right click on there, we can drill through to the details that make that up. And that will take us to another portion of our of our report catalog, take us to the report, but also filter it based on our selection from the previous report. And so we can have links within a, within a particular report, or we can have create links across reports so that when somebody drills in, those filters are brought forward to the next report. If we come back out, you know, if we want to change it back up, we can see now we're looking at everything. Reports are also filterable. So if somebody does just want to come to sort of a grid of everything we have here, through the filter panel on the right-hand side, we can make selections, right? So just show me everything for that particular customer, an item, a time period, etc. So right, whatever kind of search criteria we want to put on a report, we can add and users can interact with that data. The data is exportable as well, right? So you have the option to export to Excel. It interacts with PowerPoint, Word. So if somebody's using Power BI and there's a, a presentation to be given, you can take those visualizations and very quickly, easily move them uh, to PowerPoint for your presentation. That's a pretty neat feature there. You can link Power BI, you can link Power BI to Excel if that's where the data is going to remain, right? Or link it to wherever that new source is for where that data is going to reside. Um, but you can certainly have Excel worksheets. You can put those, even put those Excel worksheets into say your OneDrive, for example. And as that sheet gets updated, 
Power BI can be scheduled to go look for changes to that Excel file and bring that in. Right, so even okay. if there is a data entry point that remains Excel, we can still link Power BI up to that to the Excel as the data source. What you're looking at here is out to the App Source store within Power BI, and you can see there are a lot of canned, just dynamics in this case, looked for Business Central pre-canned reports. Right, that as we select these, we can link to your respective databases. Right, we can link to Business Central. Um, some of your other applications you're using internally may have an app already right we can use power bi to connect to that data source and then bring in a starting point and then start to change manipulate share uh, that core set of reports so there is a lot of reporting out of the box between power bi and business central um, just by default right by consuming these apps within power bi but the other thing on the excel side is there is an excel plugin as well um, uh, with Power BI, so you can take something you may have in Power BI and just say publish this, or sorry, in Excel, and from with a click of a button, go ahead and, and publish that to to Power BI. So there is very tight integration there. Two more quick things here, then we'll move on. Just uh, using this slide to really talk about or to show some of the different vis visualizations that you can have, and there's a core set that comes with Power BI. There's a community of people who write and publish visualizations, and you could can create your own, right? So if there's a some way people want to see that data, um, we'll look at kind of a fun one in a second. You can build that and then connect your data to it. So here's one that was published out there. It's called the Chicklet. So this is a different way to filter data. I can click on, say, Motorola, and the sheet will change. I can highlight two of them. And now I'm looking at Fujitsu and Motorola. So just, again, a way to provide people multiple ways to interact uh, with, with your data either by creating a visualization or going out and finding one uh, that somebody's created already. And lastly, and this again, just not, who knows what somebody might use something like this for. Here's an example of a fun visualization. Uh, it's called sharks. And you can set these things up to react to certain changes um, in your data. So in this case, we're looking at backlog. If something was to turn negative, a shark would die, right? And then somebody can say, I have a dead shark, and they can go take <laughs> take an action there. Uh, we've seen some stuff like this used on support cases, right? When support cases get to a certain level, uh, you know, somebody might have one of these sharks sink to the bottom or get really big and start eating the other certain things like that. So you can have some fun with it as well, right? So it's a good tool for your data, but you can also um, provide some more interesting visualizations for people. Uh, to interact with. You know, Dan, if we could just click on a few things without necessarily getting into them, because I know we yeah. want to keep moving. If you could click on the inventory by location. Oh, yeah. No, no this will be important. It's, yeah. It's a world map, but mm -hmm. you know, you could have more of a U.S. map if somebody cared about knowing where your inventory was. And um, this could get and, down to zip code, right? This is looking at a very high level, but whatever level of detail is in that location, uh, the map will show. Yep. Could you show the lot history one? I know it's not exact type of thing, but there's, yeah. there's the ability to look at details of your inventory by mm -hmm. attributes, and so you could find things by serialization or category or whatever and let people yep. search on it like that. Um, and maybe even one of the flows, Dan, I know it's not a specific thing, but you could, if we can turn into something into more of a defined workflow, you could actually look at a project type of thing with whatever deliverables maybe you're done or not done. So there's lots of different ways to present yeah. and, and information that the, so you can click on these links and see subsets of data related to the, the links. So. so if you had a certain process, you'll be everything within that particular stage. You can see that and what part numbers are built by that specific stage. So you can look across projects and find it if they're yeah. tasked, everything that's at a certain task level or whatever. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think that's my 10 minutes.